In this video, I'm going to go and show you how you can create a virtual machine that we'll use to have Visual Studio and SQL Server along with integration services all spun up so that we can start doing our HANA work. So to get started, we go ahead and click New in the new Azure portal. There's a variety of things that you can create here. We're going to start out with Compute. This is where you're going to find all your virtual machines. So by default, there's a series of machines here, for example, for Windows 2012, SQL Server, and so on. Now, rather than start with SQL Server 2014, we're going to actually take a little different approach and use a template to install Visual Studio by default. And that's because generally it takes less time to use Visual Studio as a basis than SQL Server. So we'll save a few minutes here in the overall uh, download. Now to find the Visual Studio image that we're starting with, we'll go with Developer Services. And you'll see here there's uh, Visual Studio along with the several other things. Um, we can go ahead and click uh, More here and you'll see uh, more items that you can go ahead and select. But we'll go ahead and select Visual Studio. And there are various different options here. We're going to use the Visual Studio Community Edition because that's the free edition with Windows Server 2012 R2. Uh, so this gives you a quick preview of what you're going to install. And then you'll go ahead and click Create. Now when you click Create, what will happen is you need to put in the parameters for your virtual machine. You'll enter in your host name. And in our case, we'll go ahead and enter in a host name. So we'll go ahead and type in SSIS Client. Of course, I always have problems typing Client there. We have a little checkbox that indicates OK. I tend to use a standard um, username for all my VMs just so I can remember. And I use Azure Admin as that and then the password. Now, there are a variety of machines that you can use um, for your environment. And if we go ahead and click the pricing tier, you'll see kind of the default set of the standard items. So here you have a 2 core, 3.5 GB. We have uh, two core, seven GB, um, and depending on your needs in terms of max IOs, um, and also if you want local SSD, you want to choose your various machines. And we want to find a machine that has a well, a good bounce. So I'm going to hit View All because there's another machine I like down here. So let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit, and we want to give this thing enough cores and enough memory um, to kick it off. And so. Um, here we have eight cores. That's a bit too much for a simple experiment. We're going to use four core here. And you see here we use eight drives with um, the, it will give us uh, some pretty good IOPS at a reasonable price point. So to select it, we go ahead and click there and hit select. And now we have our standard A3 machine. You can check out things like optional configurations in terms of your storage accounts by default. Uh, that uses the storage account with the same name as the machine. There's these other things called resource groups that allow you to uh, have higher availability and you can choose one of 16 locations around the globe for your VM. We'll use Central US and then click Create. So it takes a little while to spin up a virtual machine. In our case, it takes around 10 minutes. So we'll use editing here and show you what happens once it's all created after our elapsed 10 minute period of time here. So once it's finished, it goes ahead and brings up the blade in which you can go ahead and uh, see the various information about the virtual machine. You'll see there's a virtual IP address that you'll use to access the system uh, using uh, the remote desktop uh, program. There's also a private IP because we've essentially set up a VPN network. There's a host of other things that you can look at and adjust in terms of scale, uh, your disk configuration. You can always add more disks if you want. Availability sets again gives you a high availability. You can spin up another VM in that same area and it will uh, do some failovers. To connect with a remote desktop, we'll go ahead and click uh, connect and then download the RDP file. So we'll go ahead and open that. And under details, you can see we can share the clipboard and our printers. We'll go ahead and Click down to use another account and type in our Azure admin username. And password here. And then click OK. 
go ahead and confirm the certificate and I can generally check on do not bother me again hit yes and that will go ahead and launch off our remote desktop instance under Azure admin so go ahead and wait for us to see the desktop show up Okay, now that the desktop's appearing, you'll see over here uh, Visual Studio is already pre-installed. Uh, we don't need to search for other things because this is the only machine right now that we have on our network. And here what we're going to do is go ahead and before we install SQL Server, which is the next step we're going to do, what we need to do is enable the uh, .NET uh, 3. Five um, package, and we do that through Service Manager. So we'll let Service Manager uh, launch here. And to get started, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click Add Roles and Features, which is number two on the list here. So we'll go ahead and click that and confirm that we want to launch the wizard. And as the wizard's launching, we have to wait for everything to show up here. So I'll go ahead and click it again here. So this runs through the steps. Um, you can configure this as a web server and so on using uh, role-based. We're going to go ahead and uh, choose our local server here. Um, you can actually manage a series of servers with this UI. So these are all the various roles that you can choose. For example, if you want this to be a hypervisor host or a domain controller, you can select that. Uh, if we scroll down here, we'll see uh, print servers and IS. But we're going to go and click features. And what we need to do is go to .NET Framework 3.5 and click on that default. And that's needed for the SQL Server installation. Go ahead and click Next. And uh, there's this notion that you have to identify an alternative path, but since this machine is hooked up to the internet, uh, it can go ahead and find it for us. So we'll go ahead and click install now. Once we just validate everything here. And so uh, installing uh, takes a fair amount of time. Uh, so we'll let it get uh, kicked off here. and go ahead and close the dialog because so we can close it as it's launching. So now that we've uh, started the install, just to kind of show you here, what we want to do is go ahead and browse and download the uh, SQL Server data tools for BI. And here we're just looking at IE enhanced configuration and just make sure that that's off so we can easily browse the internet. Later on, if, you if this was a production server uh, you want to keep that on to keep uh, IE from doing bad things or people from downloading bad things on your computer. So go ahead and um, launch Internet Explorer here. And now that Internet Explorer is up and running, we'll go ahead and uh, use the recommended security and compatibility features here. And click OK. And then what we're going to do, I've already uh, got the search term copied to the clipboard. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and paste in Microsoft SQL Server Data Tools Business Intelligence for Visual Studio 2013. And that's because we installed Visual Studio 2013. We can then go ahead and uh, we're looking here at the last update was October 27, 2014. We'll go ahead and click on that link. Okay, and now that we've got this here, we just want to verify 2013. Good. We'll go ahead and click download to start the download process. And what we'll do is we'll save it to our uh, desktop or run. In this case, um, We'll go ahead and save as to our uh, local desktop and it's a pretty fast download because we've got a, a good connection to the internet since we're on an Azure virtual machine. You get some fairly high speed uh, connections going on here. So we'll view downloads and you see we're, we're downloading about 11 uh, megabytes per second. So um, we had a little the time for do the download and now we'll go ahead and run 
uh, the package that we just downloaded. Now this is actually a self-extracting zip file uh, with the files and we'll go ahead and download this to our desktop and we'll click OK. So to complete the download it takes about two minutes and once the download's complete we can go ahead and close the dialog and we'll go ahead and close our Internet Explorer and our server manager here and you'll see here we have our SSDTBI x86 thing. We'll go ahead and open that file and uh, one of the things we'll do is we'll just reposition here and look for setup. And you want to do the setup without the .exe uh, so we'll double click on that and we can go ahead and start our installation. Okay, so this uh, is a SQL Server 2014 installation for just the data tools. You want to accept the license terms, and it's already firing up the things behind the scenes. If you choose, if you want to, you can turn on the customer improvement experience. Um, we're going to go ahead and ignore that for now. Now, in our setup system, what you would do is uh, click on New SQL Server Standalone Install. Now, it's kind of already running in the background here, so we can go ahead and just switch to our window here. We'll move this around and uh, flip back over to this guy here. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead with our setup. It's good practice to use Microsoft Update to check for any updates, and that will patch the setup.exe with any hot fixes or anything that's come along over time. Uh, so that way you have the latest bits on the install. So we'll go through here and do our initial uh, scan. Uh, to make sure that everything's all set up. And so this is going out again, checking to see if there are newer bits out there uh, for the setup. Now we'll go ahead and run the check-in process. And this is the thing that makes sure that you have the .NET uh, framework installed. Now there are two options here. Uh, we'll go ahead and select them both. Um, the business intelligence thing, what that does is it adds a set of packages used for Visual Studio. And we can see here uh, we have all the prerequisites all set up uh, that we need for the install. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And this is going to go ahead and start up uh, the installation process. Now the install takes uh, a fair amount of time. Uh, so with the miracles of editing, we'll go ahead and just show you that it took about 27 minutes to install. Right after it installs, it launches the browser and it indicates that um, you do need to do a computer restart. So we'll go ahead and click OK and then start closing down our windows to do the uh, restart. OK, so continue to close down the windows here. OK, and then we'll use the uh, Lucky Charms off to the side here and do our um, restart on the system. Now it takes a little bit of time to restart uh, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, first indicate that this was a software application installation that was planned and that just makes an item recording in the log. So the restart takes about three minutes and then uh, so what I did is I went back to my browser and uh, you can go ahead and either connect uh, through the um, UI or you can go down here remote desktop and use your recent items and then launch the RDP file from here and we'll go ahead and put in our password so again we're in the portal and then doing a remote connect back to our virtual machine so that we can uh, configure Visual Studio and show you a quick tour of what uh, SSDTBI uh, was all about so now that uh, Windows Server is back up and running, we'll go ahead and double click on Visual Studio. And that goes ahead and launches the splash screen. And what they want you to do is sign in with your live ID to go ahead and keep your settings. But we will hold off on that step. Uh, at this point, you have a variation of themes. We're going to choose uh, on our development settings, business intelligence settings. And so this is generally intended for a BI developer or a developer who wants to do um, 
BI on various different platforms. Now the setup time takes about three minutes. And once you're in, uh, what you'll see here is a Visual Studio interface. It'll go ahead and uh, load the various components and then automatically fire up the getting started screen. So once the components are loaded up, you'll see this getting started page right here. And what you would uh, normally do, there's a whole set of resources that pop up. Um, at this point, we do want to sign in because, again, to get the free license, again, you have to sign in with your uh, Microsoft ID, which is Live ID, Hotmail, Outlook.com ID. Um, you can use your organizational email and make that a, a Microsoft ID. So we'll go ahead and take, type in the ID uh, that I happen to be using for my demo. I'll put in the password. And again, this is different from the Azure admin ID. This is your actual live ID. And we'll go ahead and download the license. And you see now we're all good to go in terms of our licensing. And we can go ahead and click close. So from end to end, um, uh, well, let's go back here. Let's go ahead and just show you a new project to see the different BI projects that you have. You have your analysis services project, your integration services project, reporting services. Um, many of these things will work with SAP HANA. Um, and what we're going to do in the next blog series is get started with integration services. So all, all told, uh, this whole process end-to-end uh, -end took about an hour and ten minutes, so if you're budgeting. So that's it. In the next blog, we'll go ahead and set up our SSIS project.